You participate in the most important Mortal Kombat in history. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're looking at the best times video game franchises got rebooted. You can do it, Laura. After all, you're a croft. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Hitman. That is Viktor Novikov, head of Sanguine and ringleader of Iago. Quite the resume. After 2012's disappointing Hitman Absolution and a couple of years of mobile games, Hitman came back strong with a 2016 reboot. It was the franchise's formula at its best. Each level was densely packed with possibilities and opportunities to reach your goal. This lent every scenario a distinct feeling of tension, like anything could happen. That level of freedom extended to the gameplay too, giving players untold numbers of ways to take out their targets. Although sales of the game were down initially, prompting publisher Square Enix to divest from developer IO Interactive, it eventually succeeded, and a couple of sequels followed it, together becoming the World Assassination Trilogy. Well done, 47. Star Fox 64. You're be a pain in the neck. The original Star Fox for the Super Nintendo was a technological marvel in 1993. However, it quickly became dated in the coming years, and by the time work had finished on its sequel in 1995, the onset of actual 3D gaming was far more impressive. Nintendo chose to scrap the completed sequel and began work on a new game for the upcoming Nintendo 64. Star Fox 64 was a complete refresh, not only in terms of graphical prowess, but story and gameplay as well. And anyone who had an N64 knows how awesome a rail shooter it is. Iconic voice lines, Think of starting to heat up. gameplay that's still smooth today, it's so good that it's overshadowed basically every other game in the series. Ninja Gaiden. Tecmo's original Ninja Gaiden series consists of brutally tough platformers. And in keeping with that, 2004's reboot from Team Ninja is just as tough, with appropriately vicious visuals to match. Its narrative was impressively sprawling compared to others at release, following the ninja Ryu Hayabusa on a quest for vengeance for his murdered clan. Combat was fantastically quick-paced and filled with gore, befitting of the blood-soaked narrative. Everyone who had an Xbox fell in love with it, prompting the studio to release several different versions with new content and enhancements. Naturally, it got a couple of sequels as well. Twisted Metal Black After finding major success with the Twisted Metal series on the original PlayStation, Sony chose to reboot the series for the PS2. Black had a much stronger focus on the characterization of its drivers. Some were quite different from previous appearances, but they all had their own narratives to follow this time around. At the time, we never would have guessed a Demolition Derby series needed much depth in its combatants, but we were happy to explore each dark and fascinating moment. It being the first entry on Sony's latest console didn't hurt either, as it was a major leap forward in visuals and gameplay variety. XCOM Enemy Unknown Now toss your grenade at the enemy in front of you. Beginning with the 1994 original, Microprose's XCOM series quickly established itself as a dominant strategy series on PC. However, things started dipping in the late 90s, culminating in 2001's awful XCOM Enforcer, released by Atari. But the series came back stronger than ever in 2012's Enemy Unknown, with former Microprose heavyweights, including Sid Meier, assisting, and die-hard fans of the originals as developers at Firaxis Games, it was an incredible blend of old school and new blood. The tactical mechanics were completely addicting, and your alien opponents entirely overwhelming. It's even credited with having led to a modern-day boom in turn-based strategy games, so it's an impactful reboot on top of being a great one. How'd it go, Doctor? Better than expected. Wolfenstein, The New Order. Oh, so 
Though it's far from the first reboot the series has received, Wolfenstein The New Order is certainly our favorite one. It reimagines the bloody FPS series with a brand new history, detailing an alternate 1960s where Germany won World War II. Through every tense, rebellious act, we as BJ Blazkowicz revel in dismantling the Nazi regime as brutally as we possibly can. Developer Machine Games did a terrific job letting us unleash war through violent weaponry and blistering gameplay. But its narratives and villains also gave us a significant drive to bring a little justice to the world. It brought Wolfenstein into the modern era, spawning sequels and spin-offs in the process. How could you stand in? Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. <laughs> Following a first failed attempt at 3D, Ubisoft purchased the Prince of Persia publishing rights and gave it the major investment it deserved. The Sands of Time followed the Prince, attempting to correct his mistake of unleashing the Sands, turning a city of citizens into monsters. The focus of traps and environmental puzzles in the earlier games got a perfect evolution here, complete with thrilling parkour traversal. The Prince also had a wonderful new trick of being able to rewind time, which was a godsend for every accidental fall or slip up during combat. The reboot gained the series a ton of new fans, and for good reason, establishing it as a stronger IP than it was before. Return it to your father's treasure vault. Guard it well. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> While there were certainly plot lines in earlier Mortal Kombat games, they didn't receive nearly as much attention to detail as the gore and gameplay. But after a few mediocre entries in the 2000s, NetherRealm figured out a clever way to reboot the series. It reimagined the ending to 2006's Armageddon, having Raiden send a message to his past self moments before his death. The 2011 game retells events of the original three games, albeit with various different outcomes and far more narrative depth. Honestly, it was an incredible way to rediscover the core fighters of the franchise. That's on top of the touch-ups to mechanics and violence, making it one of Mortal Kombat's strongest installments. <laughs> Tomb Raider. Crystal Dynamics have actually given us two great Tomb Raider reboots, the first being 2006's Legend. But Lara's 2013 origins are just too strong to ignore. It takes a look at the future treasure hunter's first exploration into the unknown, which goes horrifically wrong. With her and her team shipwrecked, players must survive under threat of a mysterious cult and deadly wildlife. Yamatai was an intoxicating locale to inhabit, literally, as navigating each stunningly crafted environment almost always threatened some form of savage demise. Camilla Luddington as Laura also made for a captivating protagonist to follow, setback after setback, as she grew and fought to make it out alive. Ah! Doom. Following an all-too-long absence and a restarted development period, Doom returned with a renewed ferocity that made it worth the wait. With a research facility on Mars once again overrun by demons from hell, the Slayer awakens to rip them from existence by any means necessary. Combat moves at a blisteringly fast pace, and yet, as each gnarly enemy charges your way, it never feels overwhelming. That's because playing as the Slayer is the ultimate god sim. <laughs> The wizards at id made every gun blast, every execution, every single thing feel invigorating, allowing us to bask in our glorious rampage. There are few FPS campaigns that feel as good to play through as 2016's Doom. And resolve this problem in a way that benefits us both. <laughs> What's your all-time favorite video game reboot? Do a barrel roll! Let us know in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great gaming videos every day.